Live from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering Mobile World Congress 2017. Brought to you by Intel. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Palo Alto at the Silicon Angle Media Cube Studios, our new 4,500 square foot uh, office. We merged in with our two offices here to have our in-studio. We're covering Mobile World Congress for two days, 8 a.m. to 6 every day, breaking down all the analysis from the news commentary and really breaking down the meaning and the impact of what's happening and the trends. And we're doing it here in California, bringing folks in and also calling people up in Barcelona, getting their reaction on the ground. We've got our reporters, we have analysts there, but all the action's happening here in Palo Alto for our analysis. Our next guest is Christina Ku, director of NTT Docomo Ventures. Uh, welcome to theCUBE, appreciate it. Coming Hi. in. Well, it's good to see you again. Great to see yeah. you. So you, obviously we've known each other for uh, over a decade now and uh, you've been in the investment community for mm -hmm. a while. I got the, the question, the first question is, why aren't you there at a, at a <laughs> Mobile World Congress? Because it's changed so much. It's a telco show and yeah. some apps are now thrown in there. But there's so much more going on right now yeah. around 5G, AI, software, end-to-end -end fabrics. Yeah. So it's not just give me more software, get more, provision more subscribers. Mm -hmm. It's a whole nother ball game. I mean, that's a great question. And uh, so our CEO of NTG Docomo is there <laughs> and uh, his C-level team, <laughs> but we are the innovation team. We have been here uh, since 2005 doing research and then added business development about three years ago. And then uh, a ventures team that's been around and now we're part of NTG Docomo Ventures. What we're looking for is more services and software. And this year, I guess the focus is AI and AI is I would call it the new infrastructure. And since wireless uh, networks are all yeah. data now, the new infrastructure is AI rules, rules for everything, vertical, um, new maps. So I can talk a little bit more about what we've been seeing in kind of the software and services area and how we're looking at the Bay Area as kind of the new innovation to bring back to Japan That's awesome. with NTT Docomo. That's awesome. Well, let's take a minute, Christine, mm -hmm. if you can, just for before we get started. Sure. Take a minute to explain what your role is and the group that you're in at NTT Docomo here in the Bay Area, sure. what you guys are doing, the focus, and, and some of the things that you're involved in. Great, yeah, no thanks. So uh, I'm a director and I invest on behalf of two funds. One is NTT Docomo Ventures for NTT Docomo, the wireless carrier, 60 million subscribers, all in Japan, our competitor is SoftBank, um, but we're, you know, bigger in Japan and have more market share. And also the NTT Group has a $250 million fund. And uh, they're off the 101 freeway, there's a NTT Security, iCube, a, division of companies mm -hmm. as well. And the idea is to bring these technologies through startups, through BD, to help them enter Japan, and uh, also to invest, uh, a minority investment. That's awesome, and so you you have to pound the pavement, go out there and yeah. see all the action. Obviously Silicon Valley, a lot of stuff happening here, and you have a lot of experience here. Your thoughts on the business model and how the AI as a service, you mentioned that, which is, we totally see the same thing. Mm -hmm. We see a confluence of old network models transforming into personal networks. We're seeing a, a trend where the relationship to the network, if mm -hmm. you will, from a personal standpoint, could be the device initially, but now it's wearables, it's the watch, it's right, the tablet. Right. So now people have this connection, digital connection, right. to the network. Mm, might not be just one network, it could be two. So now AI has to come in, yeah. but people are speculating that AI could be that nice brokering, brokering automation between all the digital right. services, whether I'm jumping into an autonomous vehicle. Right. Or so, uh, if you refer to uh, services for consumers, then the approach that we have is to offer a B2B to C business model. So in each lifestyle category, uh, we purchased a cooking school um, or percentage of, of a cooking school, ABC cooking, and then we're looking for kitchen devices right, to offer that service, uh, an oven, a, a Bluetooth connected pan. I think some of these devices will be showing up at my Mobile World Congress, and then people want a service wrapped around that. Uh, same, it, th it happened last year with fitness, with you know, Fitbit, but also there's so many other devices to monitor your heartbeat and your health at the consumer level, but, but uh, consumers want a service provider or someone to put that together for them. And so, I think AI would be in that layer. So when you say service, you don't mean like network services or like yes. connections, you mean like lifestyle services. You mentioned exactly. cooking. By the way, Twitch has one of the most popular shows in Korea. People watch each other eating food. Yeah. It's one of the hottest you know, live streaming shows. But this kind of talks about that. You mentioned healthcare. Mm -hmm. 
Is this the kind of new software you're seeing? These are the kind of new digital services? Is that what you're looking at? That's exactly what we're looking at. I think people don't associate a carrier and services. In Asia more so, maybe Korea and Japan, because 5G will happen there first, and Docomo will be the first carrier to have 5G in, uh, in Japan. I think Korea, they'll have their version first. So I think with that, um, we have been, I guess since the days of iMode, mm -hmm. offering services in, yeah. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way. And because, uh, you know, PC and, and phone has been analogous, all yeah. data services have been just data for in, in Japan. What's your take right? on 5G right now? Because obviously that's the big story at Mobile World Congress. Yeah. Is it real? Is this one of the big upgrade areas you see that being a catalyst? Yeah, I mean, we will have it for the, the Tokyo Olympics. So we're working And what on kind that. of speeds are they talking about? A gigabit, is that what they're looking at? Yeah, Around. I think it's within 30 seconds you can download a full HD movie. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> want that. Like Come on, I want that now. <laughs> we had our last guest, Sarko, yeah. like, what am I going to do with the game? I'm like, well, apps will figure it out. That's one of the beautiful things about software. What's the coolest thing that you've seen in terms of as you look at some of the things that are around the corner, what are some of the cool highlights that you see uh, in connecting the dots with some of these new kinds of services? What's the trends? It uh, depends if you say consumer, enterprise, or kind of core. Um, you know, like I said, what's in the home is interesting. Um, we're, I think uh, on the infrastructure side, mapping. I think new types of beyond ways mapping, 3D drone mapping. The drone right? thing is super hot, that right. is but, killer. But it, it requires a new data set, yeah. right? And if you look at, uh, Waze is great, but if you look at it, it's, it's, it's almost outdated now, <laughs> right? In terms of what yeah. you can imagine if there is a, a tree that comes up because of the storm or, or is falling down, it, you want that map to configure that you, so that yeah. the drone can fly over kind of the building or the tree or whatever's in the way. So you need real-time mapping, and I think that's an interesting area that we've been looking at a lot. And connectivity will fuel a lot of these devices, whether they're drones or other right. uh, sensors on the network. Is That's, um, I'd imagine, the good instrumentation out there for that and stuff. And also uh, social data, the confluence of, of, of easy, cheap social data, yeah. and then marrying that and stitching that in there. Um, you know, we found companies that uh, will identify you through video, like computer vision, and a drone will follow you and recognize you through AI. That's so cool. I think that's that's kind of you know, there maybe they're 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 uh, they're small little increases in innovation, but you know, without the AI and the machine learning. You can't. Uh, yeah, we were, it's interesting you're on this lifestyle, just these mm -hmm. services. I think that's the right strategy in the right direction because we were just having a debate earlier this morning on the Cube here about autonomous vehicles because one of the four categories of the hot trends in, uh, in Mobile World Congress is autonomous vehicles, mm -hmm. entertainment, and media, uh, smart cities, and, sure. and home. Automating all that stuff, and that's all an opportunity for services. But we were debating that, you know, transportation is not going away, but I might not buy a car in the future, right. but the differentiation might come from really cool software that allows me to take my preferences, my Spotify playlist, right. all my digital services that I'm leveraging into an environment, whether it's a car, a theater, a right. park, a stadium, whatever lifestyle I'm in, I can then move with my digital ecosystem, if you will, my personal mm, your digital aura, if you will and not have to have to reboot and connect. I mean, right now my phone works, I just associate, but you know, it still feels clunky. It's not, so I think that's kind of a, a cool direction. Is that something that, that, that you see that the telcos and most folks will pick up? Um, or is this just you guys doing that right now? I think, you know, what, what interests me about NT Jokomo when I joined was that they're kind of in the forefront and in kind of leadership of that. And I think Korea and Japan and Asia uh, are looking ahead. You know, what do you do with unlimited data and then kind of following you everywhere, right? So I think AI, uh, you know, we had Siri ship at Concierge, you know, so, which was, uh, I guess, our version of Siri a long time ago. There's a lot of uh, voice-enabled applications. So I guess, you know, will that be the interface? I think another interesting concept is what will be the interface? The phone, um, the Amazon Echo, and then what will be the natural interface for you to connect to these devices and preferences? Take us through the day-to-day -day of the life mm -hmm. of, of, of a VC that you're, kind of the deals that you do. What, do you, what happens in the, your day-to-day -day, uh, life here in Silicon Valley? Take us through some of the things that you go through every day. Um, so most days, I guess, uh, just meeting with companies and trying to find, you know, the next one. There's so many uh, great areas and also the next uh, trends. So we also uh, do a lot of enterprise deals. So I've been looking at security, cloud, uh, a lot of the DevOps or kind of, you know, what's around the mm -hmm. cloud uh, systems. 
And so, you know, finding the right companies and then also intersecting with my, I have a business development team and they connect yeah. to uh, Tokyo. So they're at night talking to the, the business uh, group leaders and finding that, that balance of, you know, what is a technology that would work in Japan? What are they interested mm -hmm. in? And then out here scouting for those yeah. companies. Yeah, one of the sub subplots of the Mobile World Congress this year, which is not, it's, it's which is consistent with pretty much the trend is that the enterprise IT is evolving very quickly because of the cloud. Amazon yeah. has certainly demonstrated the winning in the cloud and security, no perimeter, uh, API economy. These new trends are forcing IT to move from this you know, proven operational methodology to very agile, data-driven, right. high uh, compute clouds. And security is one of the huge issues. Yeah. And now you have multi-clouds where I might yeah. have something in Azure, I might have something in Amazon, I might have something on a, uh, a geographic basis in, in around the world. Right. Trying to operate globally, being a multinational, is challenging. What's your what's your take on that? Because this is an area that is not sexy as the consumer play, but in the B two B space. It is really front and center. RSA conference just yeah. you know last week we were talking on, on yeah. email about RSA two weeks ago. That was the number one thing. You got the cybersecurity issues. You got the mm -hmm. cyber surveillance and also just the threat detection Ran from what, ransomware to mm -hmm. to uh, just consumer phishing. Yeah. What's your thoughts in, in this area? So I guess uh, we're looking at uh, kind of a, what's the next new area, which would be using AI to uh, analyze all this data that's coming in from the perimeter, from the endpoint on your network, right? And then, uh, you know, what, uh, what can bubble up to the surface? So I think um, we've invested in two companies in this area, Centrify and Cypher, mm -hmm. uh, looking for kind of, you know, other other companies. Well, Centrify, as well. they're really focused on the they're breach. They're really focused. Yep. Yeah. And Tom I Kemp. We in fact we went to their party at uh, RSA. Okay. Jeff Frick and I had a great band. Uh, yeah. Had a good time with those guys, but they're doing extremely well. They're very focused they're doing on mobile. They're really well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what is the challenge in your mind right now, if you for entre if you're an entrepreneur out there for the folks watching, they're looking for kind of like the white spaces. They're looking for some tea leaves to read. Can you share any color on just advice to the entrepreneurs out there? Because it's a, certainly a turbulent time mm -hmm. in the enterprise and just in general, the cloud market. Um, like it's very competitive. Ad, ad, advice for entrepreneurs, where should they focus? What should the key key metrics they should be building building their ventures around? I think it depends on if you have an idea or have a product already, but I think it's, it's very competitive, right? And it's hard to break out of, uh, What's your product differentiation? Um, on the enterprise space, I think solving, you know, building a product, solving the problem, and then once you've done that and have built a great team, then sales. And, and I think uh, in, in the security space, trying to get to, you know, a million ARR, right? right. Um, just getting to so a certain So talk scale. about Centrify. Well, how, when did yeah. you guys invest in those guys? Early, was later on, what was round? Uh, you we, guys? we invested, uh, Pretty in the last round, yeah. so uh, we were a little late, late stage investors, but um, yeah. we're very happy with investment. Yeah, they're awesome. doing very well. Any other cool things you're working on you'd like to share? Um, I, I think you know we have uh, taken apart AI and started to look at like transportation. So I think mapping is a little yeah. bit part of that. Uh, you know, it's also driving different industries like e-commerce, IoT. We've um, Look at IoT. You must get a lot. I get yeah. this all the time. I got I to gotta ask the same question because mm -hmm. I always get asked, John, what is AI? You know, <laughs> I, now I have two answers. Oh, AI has been around for a long time, but then yeah. there's a new AI. How do you answer that question? Because I, I, AI as a service essentially is software eating the world sure, paradigm. Sure. And it certainly is happening where you're going to start to see some significant software advances. Mm -hmm. But AI in and of itself is evolving. What's your, how do you describe that AI as a service? How would you describe it to, to, the, to the lay person out there? I think uh, maybe it's early stage, it's the team and the technology, how many PhDs, you know, <laughs> what are you looking at? What type of machine learning? So that's, we have a more technical team. We build services. We, uh, you know, my boss's boss is the head of services and he reports to the CTO of Docomo and so he, his team, and they look at that. Uh, and then uh, on the other hand though, I think it's later stage is vertical industries and yeah. have people taken it apart, put it together and then are monetizing that. Yeah. And so I think it's a, it's a lot of machine work. learning, a, a lot, lot of, of data driven. Learning. So yeah. algorithms over data or data over algorithms? Uh, I, I Is there a philosophy there? I mean, that's a debate that people love to talk about. Maybe it depends on where you're applying it, yeah. who it's for, where do you get the data, how do you train the data, um, and you know, what, what is the result, right? And, and, and 
are people happy with the result? I think the core infrastructure, I think once an AI company becomes hot, then it gets per it gets bought. Yeah. And uh, at that point, you know, we all know who the players are and people are probably yeah. looking for more and more of those. So I think those are harder to find. So then, like I said, I've, uh, we've taken that apart, maybe looked at mapping. What are the, maybe yeah. more of the components underneath that that we can start to say, this well, is going to be huge in the future. Yeah, right? yeah, and I think that's a great philosophy too. If you look at how IBM has branded Watson, yeah. you can almost look at how successful that's been because people can get a mental model around that and they've taken a similar approach. Although I would say they've done very good on the vertical packaging mm -hmm. and a lot of work's going on now, I think I would say down in the, in the, in the guts of the tech. I think there's a machine learning and more going on there, which is really cool. Which utilizes the cloud. Right, and that's where the power. That's the, where the power is. The compute. Mm -hmm. I mean, Amazon has that at the at reInvent last reInvent. They announced the machine learning as a service. Mm -hmm. You're starting to see this now, where people can take a iterative approach to leveraging this AI as a service. So that's a real. I'm really impressed by that. Congratulations on on a great strategy. I think that that should be a winner. And that's going to be probably a core business model. I think other telcos should take notice of that, but maybe Thank we you. shouldn't tell them we're alive. Well, we can't put it back. Christina, thanks so much yes. for coming in. Appreciate it. Christina Koo here inside the Cube. Special coverage of Mobile World Congress. Uh, doing all the investments, checking out all the new business models and really looking at AI as a service. Uh, and that really is cutting edge. And that really is consistent with the data. It's the Cube. We're right back with more after this short break.